Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Outside Insider Podcast. You know the score by now, it's all things Eagles related. The last seven days, stuffed inside of the odorant can and sprayed onto you at a nightclub just before you go back out onto the dance floor. No spray, no lay, I say, as I spray you with Hugo Boss's finest. Welcome to the show, one and all. Firstly, a massive, massive thank you to everyone that has embraced PSN Radio. I took a fairly big risk moving my podcast onto it because the podcast itself, The Outside Insider, had a few thousand followers and we just stopped uploading there and I'm only uploading on PSN Radio now. So if you want this on your phone, on the go, if you're watching on YouTube, and you do want it on your mobile devices, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you go, PSN Radio is the place to look for. Not only do you get my podcast, but you get Bullpen Blues, you get Baseline Scoop, Duke by the River, Flipping the Birds. It never ends. We've got like eight podcasts. We've got more coming. And the idea is just to give you the best PSN content we can all in one place. So if you're not already subscribed, it'd be amazing if you could show your support. It's the best way to help the podcast grow. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere like that. Um, And we're going to roll into the show after that brief advertisement, or advertisement as Americans would say. Um, Just a quick heads up, my voice sounds a little bit more post-puberty today. That isn't the case, I can promise. I think I'm coming down with the LJ flu, which I call uh, a quarterly bit of illness where once every four months, as as quarters work, you know, um, I just burn out. And it's not like I burn out to a point where I need a day of rest and I'm in bed. It's just because I work, I don't have days off. Like, I work every day regardless, even if it's like a rest day, so to speak. Um, and because I get a full night's sleep most nights, it's just backwards. I don't ever get tired enough to let my immune system run down to properly, like, get lethargic enough to die. If that makes sense, or to be, like, bedridden and to sit there and be, like, really sorry for myself. So instead, I just get, like, a week or two of feeling really groggy, really down, like, minor cough, like, little bit of flu symptoms in the nasal nostril thing and the back of the face. It's really, like, it's just groggy, which is oddly a good word to describe the Eagles' offense. So we're, we're going to dive straight into that. I don't want to touch too much on things I've already spoken about this week. I know we put out the Monday show. I know we spoke about Carson Wentz in a film room yesterday. If you've not watched that, do check it out. But... I noticed a trend that I don't think oddly many other people have clocked onto. And it's a little bit interesting. And the thing that brought it to my attention was Jalen Rager. Because obviously the Eagles are going to be without Rager for, what, up to eight weeks now. He sprained his UCL, or tore his UCL, I should say, in his thumb. Which sounds painful. Like, I don't even know where a UCL is in a thumb. Like, if you look at your thumb right now, I'm feeling around. I, I don't know where a UCL is, but... It doesn't look very big, but I reckon it hurt. And that out of context sounds really bad, okay? So just no one clip that for any reason, all right? We're, we're all adults here. Let's behave ourselves. Um, but Jalen Rager's out for eight weeks. He will have surgery. I think he's had it this week, as all said to PSN, or he's going to have it this week. Haven't really checked back in to see how that's gone, but we'll try and give you updates when we can. Um, and I was like, well, okay, that sucks. You know, Rager's been playing a fairly big role in the offense. You know, he's had a... Fairly good start to the season. So what what does this mean? What are the offense going to do without Jalen Rager? Because so far, he's got 96 receiving yards. He's third on the team. And I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty good. You know, he's getting a lot of attention. And then I noticed something interesting, okay? Something something very, very interesting. That in terms of targets, Dallas got at 17, Zach Ertz 14, Deshaun Jackson 16, Greg Ward 8, Jalen Rager, eight. Miles Sanders has seven after one game. So if you equate that to another seven, like he's probably going to overtake Rager by average by, if he stayed healthy by like three or four weeks in, right? So again, I'm like, well, all right. So tight ends are dominating. Fair enough. Rager, rookie year. COVID, not going to get fully implemented into the offense. He's not a WR1 yet. Um, What's going on there? Like that's, you know, it's, it's a big loss. It's a big loss. But at the end of the day, he's not getting... A hefty amount of offensive attention, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Like, I'm sure they could use Hightower, I'm sure they could use Greg Ward in that role, maybe move Hightower into the slot, and then maybe put Arthega Whiteside at WR1. Like, that's why I was looking at. I said this earlier in the week. I think Arthega Whiteside would be the X guy. Um, and then Doug Peterson goes and say it today. So Doug Peterson, PSN Stan, we love to see that content here. That's brilliant. Um, but then I realized that actually this is quite alarming. And it's not for the reason you think. So through two weeks, okay, I mentioned that, you know, Zaka, Dallas Goddard, 
leading the way in targets outside of the Sean Jackson. Like, they combined between them for 31 alone. Out of, you know, a total of 50 targets, 31 is the tight end. Now, bear in mind, Miles Sanders has seven. Boston Scott has five. Corey Clement has two. If you add that together, that's 14. That's quick math. All right, so 31 and 14 is 45. No, it's not. Yes, it is. What is going on here? Oh, he's had 85 attempts to make your farm. So 31 out of 85 are tight ends. 14 go to the running backs, which leaves you with what, a third, roughly? Not even that, to wide receivers. Do you know who's played the most snaps on this Eagles offense? On the wide receiver position. So forget the tight ends and the linemen and all of that, and the quarterback. Of the wide receivers, who's played the most snaps? It's Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager has played 100 snaps. That's eight more than Deshaun Jackson. It's a lot more than JJ Athega White. I tried to work it out then. I couldn't. Athega White side's on 45. Oh, 66. Sorry. Really bad at maths. Um, Greg Ward's on 43. Hightower's 34. So that straight away is alarming. You're like, okay, well, Greg Ward's a starting slot receiver, right? He's on 43 snaps. He played 18% of snaps in week two. That's not good. That's not great. But the fact that Jalen Rager has played in 100 snaps, the most of any wide receiver, and he has received the same amount of targets as Greg Ward, who has played 66 less snaps, is alarming. And you're like, okay, well, why is this happening? Like, why, why are they doing this? Well, the Eagles, who injected a ton of speed this offseason, who spent their entire plan going after guys like Marquise Goodwin, Jalen Rager, John Hightower, Kez Watkins, like any receiver that had legs that worked and got them going quickly was an option. You know, free agency, a lot of people were looking at Robbie Anderson, for instance. And I mean, we were just, I, I assume, thinking that the Eagles are going to transition to more, maybe 11 personnel. Maybe you're going to focus on wide receiver heavy sets. We're going to get those speed guys open. We're going to dictate the offense. And it hasn't happened really hasn't happened. The Eagles have run 12 personnel over 80% of the time in week two. 80% of the time in week two. Right? And you look at the week two stats, who's dominating targets? That's got it. Zach Ertz. Again. And where have we seen this before? Literally every year since Rager was drafted. 2019, Zach Ertz had 135 targets. The leading three wide receivers had 142 combined. Dallas Goddard had 87, so he'd probably fit into that mold quite well. 2018, Zach Ertz had 156. Receivers had 217 combined. But again, they were all a lot healthier, but you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Dallas Goddard had 44. So if you were to add the tight end together, right, 200 snaps in 2018. Goddard's rookie season. T targets, I should say. 17 less than the receiving corps. 2019, you're looking at over 200, which is over 60 more than the leading three receivers. And then this year, it's neck and neck again. And Deshaun Jackson has been forcible 16 times, caught eight passes. That's not good. I also don't get why Deshaun Jackson's taking rest days and why he's... Mum tweeted me saying, oh, it's not like a regular rest day. It's like a day where you can get in proper condition. So a rest day. That's what that is. That is it's by definition. That is, I, my point was, I understand he's taking a rest day. The lack of communication behind it is what was getting me. But that's a different story. Like, as much as this offense has changed, as much as this offense has moved on, has developed, has been, it's very play action now. Oh, we're going to try and roll Wentz out. We're going to base it off the run game. We're going to get Miles Sarnett in open space. We're going to use Boston Scott. We're going to use it to set up deep looks with Carson Wentz, who couldn't hit a barn door at the moment. It's exactly the same. It is exactly the same. And that is a bit worrying. Because we don't know now what the future holds for the offense. Have they invested all of these stocks at wide receiver to still run two tight end sets? And if they are insistent on running 12 personnel, and they're going to be insistent on running 12 personnel, why isn't Zach Ertz paid? Why isn't Zach Ertz paid? Why would you complicate that? I, I don't understand why you would make that scenario where 
you're paying other players and you're making other moves. Like you're, you'd rather give Jason Peters a bit more money than pay uh, on a long-term deal money that he frankly deserves. The Eagles are in a unique spot. The only reason they're only running like 12 personnel is because they've got arguably the most dynamic tight end tandem in the league. Brilliant. Well, in two years' time, Goddard's a free agent and so is Zach Ertz. If they can't find a way to get both of them, this is going to suck a lot. Carson Wentz does have a habit of sticking to primary reads, right? Or getting glued to read very early on or looking for those safety blankets. And that's fine. But if you lose one of them, Zach Ertz, who's been there since his rookie season, has been that go-to guy, has been the ultimate Carson Wentz third down machine. Been the ultimate Carson Wentz red zone target. Dallas Goddard, who is becoming the yak monster tight end, who on screens and second and long is getting in into position now. What Zach Ertz does well is sit in between those soft zone coverages and find the open space. Goddard has the physicality and the athleticism to do what Zach Ertz lacks. So together, you've got a complete tandem. And they're going to lose that. So it's either... You prepare for that loss and you implement wide receivers and you spread the ball around. And let's not forget, this isn't, and I'm not criticising Carson Wentz here because I've done enough of that this week. And it's not about ball spreading or route recognition or going through reads or anything like that. For me, this is much more fundamental. But this isn't the first time that Carson Wentz has been criticised for not spreading the ball around the offence by people in the locker room. It hasn't happened yet this year. It wouldn't surprise me if it did soon. So what happens now? Like, wh- where do the Eagles go from here? Because you've got one receiver, Deshaun Jackson, dominating it all. J.J. ortega Whiteside isn't getting anywhere near it. Greg Ward's barely getting any playing time. Jalen Rager's now injured, despite playing 100 snaps and getting eight targets. Eight targets on 100 snaps. And I understand that not every route he runs is a passing route. I fully get that. But you can also make the attempt then... Or the stat out of 84 passing attempts from Carson Wentz, less than a tenth of them have gone to the first round pick. Which isn't good. So, as much as this offence changes, and as much as we can say, oh, they're struggling with play action, they're struggling with this, they're doing that, the blocking, the running, whatever. It's still the same old story. It's still dominated by tight ends. And that's fine. But you're not paying one of them. Who just so happens to be one of the elite tight ends in this league. He just so happens to have broken nearly every franchise record at the position that there is. Who broke the NFL single season reception record. I don't want this podcast to be a pay Zach Ertz show. But there is a lot of worry there around, alright, well if the Eagles are going to run nothing but tight 12 personnel and focus everything through the funnel of tight ends and use the speed guys to get them open, wouldn't you pay the guys to get open in the first place? Wouldn't you keep Noah Togai around? A cherished, undrafted free agent who slipped through the cracks and now is making an impact with the Indianapolis Colts? Would you have not drafted one? Would you have not tried to develop one? Would you have kept a guy around like Trey Burton? For instance, when he came out and drafted 2014. They haven't done that since. So there is a clear discrepancy between, I think, what the front office want to do and what the coaching staff want to do. The front office, I feel, want the speed. They want the explosion. They want the fun. They want the flash. I think the Eagles are perfectly happy, coaching-wise, to run it up the gut, to use the tight ends, and they don't care how they score or who does it, but the tight ends are the fundamental base of that offense. And I think that's going to get messy, and I'm a little bit scared. And... I've been sitting on it all week and wondering how to word it and I'm in the midst of writing an article and I thought it's just easier to say it on the podcast. So I want to know what you guys think. If you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments down below. If you're not, tweet me. Tweet me anyway, at Liam Jenkins PSN. Um, if you're on YouTube now, then it's just going to be the end of the show. This is just the first like 10, 15 minutes or so. The rest of the show goes up separately as a whole podcast. If you want that, make sure PSN Radio is the place to go. You can subscribe. All the information is on the screen right now. Make sure you check it out. From myself, Liam Jenkins, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.